So, thank you. Thank you so much to Miss Annabel Gonzalez for the brief and wonderful introduction of this presentation. So, in my part, I am going to tackle on understanding on how Asian nations deal with globalization and regionalism. But first, I would like to introduce myself. I am Miss Emeline Hinay. I am a student of BSA English, Section 1B. I also wanted to acknowledge our instructor, Mr. Rodrigo Sumuob. Without further ado, let's dive in into our discussion. This is my topic, understand on how Asian nations deal with globalization and regionalism. Economic partnership and testified in the aftermath of World War II with the formation of multilateral organizations and global and regional trade blocks. Such cooperation was made possible to, through trade agreements and unions focused on the free exchange of goods and services across the nation. So, economic partnership intensified in the aftermath of the World War II. There is formation of multilateral organizations and global and regional trade blocks. Such cooperation was made possible through trade agreements and unions that is focused on the free exchange of goods and services across the nations. So one of the example of this is the Philippines-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement or the PJAPA. So that is the first bilateral free trade agreement of the Philippines. It was signed in Helsinki, Finland by then President Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo and former Prime Minister of Japan, Junishiro Koizumi. So that is the first bilateral free trade agreement of the Philippines and Japan. So how Asian nation deal with globalization and regionalism? Number one, regional economic cooperation. So regional economic cooperation, it can make a possible stronger transport and trade connectivity through coordinated physical investment and harmonization of policies, rules, and procedures. So with regional economic cooperation, there is um, a stronger transport of coordinated physical investment. So what is the role of this regional economic cooperation? So the role of economic, regional economic cooperation is to contribute harmonious and sustainable growth and also to enhance private sector's development and to complementary national development strategies. And also, it is very important means to achieving stability. We have ASEAN or Association of Southeast Asian Nation. It is a regional grouping that promotes economic, political, and security cooperation among its 10 members. ASEAN is an association of Southeast Asian Nation. So, there is a, this is a grouping, regional grouping that is promote economic political and security among its members. What are the countries members of ASEAN? We have Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines of course, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So basically that is from the Southeast Asian region. So that is the members of ASEAN. That is focusing on the economic, political, and security cooperation. We have 
Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC. So, APEC or Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation have been most effective in facilitating trade and investment and reducing regulatory barriers among markets. In other words, the region's cooperative mechanism are involving on multiple tracks and gradually developing unique comparative advantages. So, the Pacific economy, economic cooperation is effective on facilitating trade and investment and reducing regulatory barriers among the markets. Next, we have, so this is called East Asian model. So, how they uh, deal with globalization and regionalism? So, it is pioneered by Japan. It is a plan for economics growth whereby the government invests in certain sectors of the economy in order to stimulate the growth of a specific industry in the private sector. So, it includes state control of financial direct support for state-owned enterprises in strategic sectors of the economy, high dependence on the export market. So, the East Asian model, uh, which is it's planning on economic growth and a in investment in a certain sectors and also it, it stimulates the growth of a specific industry in the private sector. Next, we have the consensus strategy. The Asian nation also uses a strategy to deal with globalization and regionalism. So, consensus strategy it is a group decision-making process in which the final outcome requires agreement by all parties involved. For example, of this process is like agreeing on the fundamentals like mission, vision, and decision rights. So the consensus strategy, decision-making process. So not only one person is going to decide on the on how they are going to deal with something. But this strategy is um, collaborated with many parties that it's involved on the decision-making process. So the outcome of the decision is going to be agreed by the involved parties. Next, we have the markets drive integration. So, markets drive integration. Regional integration in Asia is partly a result of the region's rapid growth and increasingly weight in the world economy. Since trade and finance are also key drivers of regional integration, their continued development will increase interdependence. So, market drive integration. So, trade and finance are also key drivers of regional integration. So, their continued development will increase interdependence. So, first, what do you mean by interdependence? So, interdependence is, it is refers of two or more countries that impact on relying on each other. So, there is a um, connection between each countries to the other countries and they are relying on each other to have that um, rapid growth of stability in the world economy. Next, we have the policymaker. So Asia's deepening connections are beginning to be reinforced by policy. So this is consistent with the region's cautious policy making style so but it has also reflected asian trade pattern it is a uh, consist of groups of nations there is um parties involved on making policies so there is rules regulations that is going to be implemented so there is a pattern 
of uh, Asian trade pattern to follow in order to have that connections, in order to have that deep, uh, deepening Asian connection with each other by reinforcing policy. Next, we have the emerging regional agenda. So, Asia's growing interdependence present a compelling case for regional cooperation to deliver regional public goods, manage regional externalities, and help coordinate policies within the region as a new as acting together to ensure an open global economic environment. So the emerging agenda, it's an Asia's growing interdependence um, for regional cooperation. That the main goal is to deliver regional public goods, manage regional externalities, and help coordinate policies within the region. So, as Asian economy have grown not only richer, but also closer together. So, what do you mean by this? So, it means that there is a unity in diversity. So, which means that there is connections, there is unity on the Asian country between them to have that um, economic become more richer. So, one of the example of the unity and diversity is the ASEAN or the Association of Southeast Asian Nation. So, in ASEAN, there is diversity, there is unity. It is because um, Asian nation is having that differences, right? For example, the China is a communist country. Japan have also um, unique culture, unique beliefs, and also the Philippines. They become closer together. They become unity. They become united. They become diverse in order to have that um, stability, cultural uh, diversity, to become more powerful and richer in Asian economy. So that is one of the example of the unity and diversity. And that is ASEAN or Association of Southeast Asian Nation. In what way? In what way Asia's economies have grown larger and more complex? Of course, through trade, financial flows, direct investment, and other forms of economic and social exchange. That is the way on how the Asian economies have grown larger and more complex because of the trade to trade, financial flows, direct investment, and other forms of economic and social exchange. Oh, Asia is leapfrogging through multi multi-local innovation network. So what do you mean by leapfrogging? So it is like you are going to jump over and find a way on how to resolve that crisis, on how to resolve the challenge that you are facing. So Asia is also leapfrogging through multi-local innovation network. So other Asian countries and like China, have built strong innovation foundations, including a base of large incumbent companies and institutions that are providing capital and knowledge to power innovation in other Asian economies. So we are going to tackle also economic crisis. The ASEAN, along with other like China, Japan, and South Korea, established as emergency fund, emergency fund that stabilized Asian economies after the rippling effect of the Thailand economy's collapse. So, where did they get that uh, fund? So, they are going to get that funds through the resources. So, countries need to pull their resources together to make themselves more powerful. Why Asian countries form regional organization? 
Asian countries form regional organization, it's because of the crisis, the challenges that they faced. So, they form regional organization as a way of coping with the challenges and crisis of globalization and regionalism. The regional organization have also a significant role to deal with the challenges and crisis for globalization and regionalism. We have Professor Joshiro Urat from Japan. He outlined the evolution of Japan that initially shed away from free trade agreement or the FTAs to countries that is now pressing for economic cooperation. So, Orat in Japan highlighted the fact that Japan's shrinking population needs stimulus to ensure domestic demands. So, what's the solution to this crisis? As we all know, 20 to 2022, that uh, many Filipinos or even other Asian countries have been working or have been migrated to Japan in order to work. That is because of the Japan's crisis of shrinking populations. The FTA uh, or the free trade agreement, so they are going to provide a solution. So they are going to encourage some investment and import infrastructure and most of all, human resources. So they have to provide infrastructure, they have to provide import and also investment. They are going to encourage some investors and most especially human resources. For the conclusion on how Asian nation deal with globalization and regionalism is through unity and diversity. So they form regional associations, institutions, funds from the resources, and they have strategies. And reflecting on the mistakes and take it as an opportunity to have a successful cycle of globalization and regionalism in the Asia. So that is how they deal with globalization and um, regionalism on Asia. So I hope you learned a lot from this presentation. And once again, thank you to my colleague, Miss Annabel Gonzalez, and most especially to our instructor, Mr. Rodrigo Somuob. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much.